All right, so we're going to do um, 2.6. This is 2.5 um, from the old notes or from the old book. And so this is just transformation as a function. So here, suppose c is greater than 0. The reason we're supposing c is greater than 0 because if, um, we'll deal with negative, um, negative of a function later. And so we'll just put it, if c is less than 0, we'll treat it as, c, we'll treat it as a negative and c is greater than 0. So this will make sense later. Um, all right, here, that way we can clearly say. So if a graph, so here, if, I'm, if I take a function of a, if I take the graph of a function and add plus c to it, I'm shifting the original function upwards two units. And if I minus c from it, I'm shifting it down two units. And so this is the most um, basic transformations we're going to do. And then we'll get into a little bit more complicated ones. And so here, I'm going to show you a representation. So for each of these uh, different um, transformations, I'm going to show you a visual representation, and then we're going to do a a real representation, we're always going to do it on x squared, and then we're going to do it with a different function. So here, um, I'm probably going to want two different colors. That's fine. So let me just do this. Um, let me put my original function here as f of x. Let's go ahead and just put another f of x here. And then here we're going to have a different color. Um, let me actually make this a, whole, a totally different color. Let's make this, I don't know, a dark maroon. All right, so here, if I'm shifting it upwards, I'm just going to go up C units, and then more or less it should be, let me see if I can draw here, it will be F of X plus C, and this will be f of x minus c. And then here, right here is c units, and right here is c units. So if I added two, so if I add, oh, so here is c units, and here is c units. So it just moves it up and down by c. This is the most basic transformation. You guys are probably used to this one. OK, so here I'm always going to do what I call our basic function here. And I'm going to label that as x squared. That way you can see, hold on if I draw this correctly. Uh, here, oops. <laughs> All right, that's almost better. All right, so sketch the graph by completing the vertical shift. And so here we're gonna take, for this we're gonna take f of x, and we're gonna shift, or in this case, x squared, and we're going to shift it up by, and this, oh, oh no, did I say up? Shift it down. Even this is annoying, right? Hi. <laughs> down by three, right? Because here I'm moving the three, so we go down by three. So here I'll just count down one, two, three, and then go ahead and put in the points I know should exist. Okay. And so everywhere this should be three, then this should be three units better, right? This is, well, I guess I should have it a little bit more out. Right, so this should be three units, and everywhere should be three units. Okay. All right, so let's do this again. So here my basic, so here I'll say my f of x here is x cubed. And to draw that, just looks like, oops, <laughs> I made it a little too sharp. That's x cubed. And so here we're going to take x cubed and we're going to shift it up by 2. Okay. And so here we're just going to go up 2 units. So 1, 2 would be here. Up here from 2 units, we'd 1, 2 would be here and here. 
to look something vaguely like this. It's actually really close and on top of each other. Um, and it looks like the spacing here is greater, but no, even here, if I go down two units, it's just closer in. Okay. All right, so I'll take a drink, let you copy that. Um, we're going to do this, this level of detail for each of the shifting, even though it's not necessary probably for the vertical shift, but for the horizontal and the shrinking and the stretching and the reflections, I think it's useful. So you can clearly see where we started and where we went, because at the end of this, we're going to put it together as multiple shifts at once. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this next one here. Oops, I already have my extra layer. All right, so horizontal shift. So here, if I have x minus c, x minus c, I shift to the right, and this is kind of counterintuitive. You think here, if I, because here, if I added something, I went up, right? And if I minus something, I went down. Well, here, in the x direction, if I add something, going up would be to the right. But here, it's when I minus something, I go to the right, and here, when I add something, I go to the left. And so it's a little bit backwards. Horizontal shift tend to be that way. Um, and see if I can explain, see if I can kind of explain it. So here, let's go ahead and draw and I uh, know my function again. Let's go ahead and draw this and call this f of x. Let's draw in the same function just for fun. Let's call this f of x. All right, so here, if I have f, if I'm shifted right, that means I minus C units. So here I'm going to just go over C units here, and I'll go over C units here. And so here I'm just, okay. Um, actually, that would be a little bit more like that. And so even here, this is C units over. And so this is always C. Here, if we do it to the left, we go over, or to the right, we go over if I see units. And so this is C, this is C, this is C. So this is X. Oops, I didn't write what this was. This is F of X minus C, and this is F of X plus C. Now, let me kind of explain why this is to help you not to always do it, go in the correct direction. The reason this is, is that, let's pretend I have f of x plus four, right? So when x is zero, the function, this function believes it's four, right? So here, whatever the value at four is, is really what my value at zero is, right? Um, and here, if the f of x is, uh, let's see, I can say this. Let me see if I can, let me do it this way. f of 0 plus 4 is equal to f of 4, right? And so it's, in order, when I add something, I, I think I'm ahead of the game, right? And so it's kind of like if a car starts, um, if a car starts earlier, it's run through the function, right? I, I guess in my mind, how I think about it is, is this is a little vehicle and as it drives on the x-axis, it goes up and down on some up and down a hill, right? And so if one car started earlier, it's higher or lower on the hill compared to another car. I don't know, I, I feel like I'm explaining this terribly. It's one of those things, if you mess with it a couple times, you get it. Maybe someday I'll be able to explain it well. All right, so let's, oops, I'm in the wrong color now. So let's go ahead and show. So this here, my original function here is going to be f of is equal to x squared. And so here I have something squared. And part of 
part of doing the section well and doing transformation well is identifying what is the original function that's been altered. Well, this is my original function. I'll go ahead and draw that in. Roughly. And what we're going to do to it is here we're x minus 2. So minus 2 means I've shifted it to the right. So this is x squared shifted uh, right by 2. OK, so here I'm just going to move over two units. So one, two units here. And then this is two units over. This is two units over. Kind of skips this in. Luckily for you, the uh, most of the homework problems I looked at, they you just says you identify the graphs. You actually don't have to draw these things, so it's a little bit easier. I wish I had you draw one or two of them, just to get you a little bit more used to what's going on. So f of x here, the original function here is one over x. Does everyone see how this is the original function? And then if I add two to it, that's the function I'll get. Because here, f of x plus 2, if f of 1 over x, everywhere I see an x, I'm going to add an x plus 2. So here, I'm going to take 1 over x, and I'm going to shift it. Shift it. That is not shift. Shift it by shifted left by two. So here we're going to shift it left by two. So here, let's draw the original function in. And this is a good review of our functions. So remember that one over x looked like this. It's where we have some asymptotic line right here. So if I shift this to the left two units, so the what I would do is in my mind kind of draw, put in the little asymptotic line right here. And then it'd be here and here. Right? So here we're moving this over two units, this over two units, everything gets moved two units. So it comes in and then goes through and goes out. And here it comes in and goes through and goes up. Okay, so we just moved the whole thing over by two. All right, I'll let you copy that down. We'll do the next one. All right, so let's do the functions. So here, um, so here, if we have negative f of x, we flex it across the x-axis. So if it was positive, it's now negative. If it was negative, it's now positive. And here, um, negative f of x is a reflection across the y-axis. So here, instead of you know kind of driving the car forward, you drive it. Backwards. So if the original function, well, here let's just let's just sketch some stuff. Um, I'm going to do two different graphs to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on in this case. So here, let's pretend this is my original function f of x, and then here, so here I'm going to reflect it across. Should go up a little bit more. There we go. And so this would be minus f of x. And so here, if f of x was negative, it becomes positive. If positive, it becomes negative, right? And so you just reflect across this thing. So if it was up, it's down, down, it's up. Here, um, let me draw in a function. So let's just draw in some function here. So this is f of x. 
a minus f of x. Um, basically, you just draw the whole thing backwards. So I only know from here, so I'll just go ahead and draw it from there. Then it comes up. And then it goes down and up and down again. So that's what we know. I guess that's, <laughs> I guess I kind of crashed into room. That's a minus f of x. And so here, if you think about in the car analogy, right, if I, if in order to draw this function, I start here and go this way, here I'm just going to start at the opposite end and drive backwards, right, and then they'll meet at y equals zero, okay? I think that one's easier to see, you just draw the thing backwards, because you've flipped all your x's. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the two sketches. All right, so here, the original function here is x squared. So we're going to say f of x is equal to x squared. Here we're going to say f of x is equal to square root of x. So here we're going to just draw in those two functions. So here, here, uh, here, here, here. Let me get my point so I can almost attempt to draw this in correctly. And then here, here, and then here. The points I'm using for these is one or zero zero one one and then four one or four two and then roughly at three three nine. And here I'm using the zero, the negative one, the negative ones, the two fours, and then the roughly the threes to make that. All right, so here the x is on the outside, so I'm going to so this is going to be x squared uh, reflected reflected uh, across the x-axis, okay, so everywhere it's positive, it's negative, so that looks like this, Oops. okay, so that one you're going to apply across the x-axis. For this one, we're going to do square root of x, uh, reflect, reflected across the y, axis. And so here, we'll just have this. Okay. And notice here that the domain for this function is all negative x, right? And the, well, this one's all positive. And so the domains will swap and all this other stuff. We'll get into that in the next section. Okay. So that's the end of this, uh, Okay, so go ahead and copy that down and I'll load up the next one. That's what I told it to do, but not what I wanted. All right, so let me clear these out. So we have um, the room, or not really room, but memory space. Zoom, Photoshop, and to eat a lot of power. Okay, so let's do the next one. So here we're going to do shrinking. Um, so stretching and shrink, shrinking. Here, this this one's quite intuitive. The, the other one's a little less intuitive. All right, so here, um, if C, so we're going to choose C between zero and negative. Um, so C is going to be positive in this case. If it's one, it's, it has done nothing. So if it's between zero and one, it shrinks the graph. And if it's greater than one, it stretches it um, vertically by a factor of C. And then if it's like a negative, so if you have a negative, say if I have negative two F of X, 
we'll actually consider that as two times a f of x and then negate it, so flip it. Um, so we'll do those in or a very particular order. Um, and we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so here, let's go ahead and just do, let me just do, I'll do the same function here. So we'll just do a function looks like this of f of x. Do another function looks about the same for f of x. And then here, if I stretch it by c, um, so stretching by c, remember that c greater than one. Here I'll have, it'll be much stronger, but it will still go through the same zeros, right? So it's be f of, or c f of x. And then here we'll have c less than, um, if it's zero, the function is zero, if it's one, so it's strictly, and so here it still has the same zeros. It just doesn't move as much, so there's a little bit of that. Okay, so that's what we do here. So it's just stretch and shrink. So let's go ahead and do our two things. So let's go ahead and graph our original one. So we'll do, 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 do. Let's wrap in my x squared. We'll put in, whoops, I was a little early on that. All right, so our original function here, so f of x, before we mess with it, will be um, x squared. Here, the original function before we mess with it is the absolute value of x. So what are we doing now? Here, we're gonna be stretching it by three. Uh, so this is uh, stretched. By p, um, with a stretch vertically. I'll put a vert in there. That is not pooped. Right square. And then here we're going to take the absolute value of x, and we're going to sh uh, sh shrink it. Shrink uh, vertically. Vert by uh, zero point. So roughly. So what does that mean? So here, um, let's do this. So here, so here I'll have one, zero, zero. Instead of at the one, it's going to be three higher. And at four, it's at like 12. And so it's mighty sharp like this. So that's just what that ends up doing. So it kind of just, it pulls the function kind of in this direction. So it pushes it out. Here we're going to, you know, kind of just stuff it in this way. And we're going to do it by a factor of five. So um, if this is eight up here, over at eight, it's actually only here at four. So here's our function here. One, two, three, four. And so it's only half as tall, right? So it's been gone down. Okay. All right. Can you explain why the is stretched again? So here I have three on it. So here I have a three. And so here I'm taking the x3 and I'm gonna stretch it vertically by three. And so basically it's kind of like I took, um, well here I can kind of, let me, let me be, let me use the power of Photoshop for one second. So let's pretend I have this, right? I like, in order to do this, let's pretend I have this real quick. I'm gonna do this without a graph. And then I'm gonna duplicate this layer. Layer, yeah, just make it level four copy, and then I am going to uh, dye it um, I think it's command H. Uh, yeah, I think it's you. Ah, you and saturation. So let's make this, let's just pinch the hue on this puppy. 
make it high saturated. I'll make it purple. Okay. And then I'm going to grab this thing. And so here I'm just going to stretch it. Oops, that's making it bigger. I only want to want to see if I can actually do this. Scale, rotate, skew, distort. Do not do scale. Do distort. There we go. So I'm pulling it up like this. And notice that as I pull it up by this, by a factor of three, right? It sinks in a little bit. Now this isn't quite fair. <laughs> and so that's what I'm doing here. As I'm just pulling it up. And so here I went from... So let's go back to where I was originally at and just do it. Oh, no, nope. give me back my brush pull. So from here, I started from, oops, all of a sudden I'm in white. So here I started at one, zero, zero. Here, instead of at zero, when X is one, the valuation of this is three. And so instead of one here, I'm gonna go up to three. And here, when, I, when X is two, two squared is four. Four here becomes 12. And so that's way up here, okay? And so by putting a three in front of it, I'm stretching it vertically, which kind of makes it a little bit more narrow, as you can see by the example here. If I if I drew this a little bit less, if I do this a little bit more carefully, it would have been more clear, but um, it's like physically pulling the endpoints, yeah. <laughs> and so here we're just physically pulling it, and then we'll do the same thing uh, on this one. And this, this time I'm physically screw. Oh, let me edit, edit skew. Thank you. Here it's like, oops, no. It's not going to do what I want to do. So it's like pushing it down. So you're physically moving them up or down. So if it, if it was one, it's now three. And here, if it was four, now it, if it's four, now it's two, right? So if it was four, now it's two. Here, if it's eight, now it's not. And so this is the way this works. And it's good to have this underneath your belt because we're going to do the harder one now. So here, hi. Let me go back to. Let me go back to my brush tool. Thank you. There we go. Because <laughs> here. Here, if I if c is greater than one, I'm going to shrink the graph by a factor of c, and if c is less than or equal to one, I'm going to stretch the graph by a factor of c. So horizontally, could you just back up for a bit? I'm sure I can back up for one second. Um, horizontally, we're going to do things backwards. So when you do transformations, horizontally, almost always think I'm going to do opposite of what I wanted it, right? <laughs> Sometimes this looks a little bit weird. Okay. Okay, so let me go forward so we have time to finish all this before we go that. I can post it. I'll show you the thing in between. Okay. So here, let me go ahead and draw in my f of x like I did before. It's my f of x. Uh, here's my f of x. All right, so here, if I'm going to stretch it by C, so here, it start way out here. At X equals um, zero, it's gonna have the same value. And then I'll just be a little bit slower and still reach the same thing. So I'm just pull, so I'm pulling it this way when, X, when C is um, between zero and one. And the way to think about it is, is if I was a little car here, right, and I was driving through my function, this car would travel at less speed. So let's say at 0 0.5, right? So it's going, it's half the speed of the normally the function would go through it, right? Because when x, when here f of, let's say if I had one half here, it would, x would have to be four before the function thinks it's two, right? Because four times a half of four is two. And so it just takes longer for it to do that. Now when we shrink it, 
it's kind of like if I do the same thing, now I have a car that goes way faster, right? And so the system sees greater than one. So the car is just faster in this case. So if I have like something like 3x, well, when x is 1, the function already thinks it's 3. When x is 3, it already thinks it's 9. And so it just, it just goes through the function faster. Now, the problem with all this is it gets a little bit complicated here. I'll leave that there for you guys. It gets a little bit complicated here. So here I have f of x. Because if you're just looking at a graph, it's you. Sometimes it's impossible to tell when you horizontally stretched a graph and vertically sh or vertically sh or have done something vertically just because of symmetry. Let me explain. Let me explain why. Um, here, let me say this is f of x is equal to square root of x. Okay. All right, so what what happened in here? So let's go ahead and draw our points four and eight. You know what? Let me do that. Boop. Just in case I want to. So here we're gonna have this point, this point, this point, and up here basically. Go in, cut in. All right, and then on the next layer, I'm just going to mimic this. All right, so let, me, let me see if I can do this. Um, transform, restart, okay. And so here, what am I doing as I'm less than I'm less than C, so I'm pulling it. I'm pulling it this way, right? I'm pulling it this way. By a factor of a half, right? That's basically what I'm doing here. So that looks like that. However, if I put it back the way it was, if I shrink it, by that same factor. Notice here, it kind of goes through the same points. Um, I think I actually can do this and I'll demonstrate that in Desmos too. So let me get rid of this layer. No, nope, I want to get rid of there. Thank you. So here, I'll just go ahead and draw it in normally. And so here, Right, so it's so it's kind of the same because here if I pulled this out, right? If I square this, it's become 0, 0.2.5, right? So instead of stretching it this way, another way of writing this, let me do this in out now pink real quick, is I could write this as y prime equals 0 0.25x squared. So in this case, stretching it, stretching it out. Vertically is the same thing as shrinking it horizontally by a factor of four, right? Um, and here, um, let me, oops, I need to draw my original. Draw my original. That is not how that goes. Here's my original. And here, if I stretch it by three, notice here at one, it's one, it's still be the square root of three, so it's a little bit like 1.4. Um, see if I can get another good point. Here at three, three times three is nine, so that's three, so that's up here. And so it looks like this. You notice that looks like the same thing as stretching it, because here, if I have y, if I pull out this three, I can say it's negative, or one point, Square root of three is 1.7 something, I think, right? Square root x. That's gonna bug me, I don't know. So they end up being the same. So let me double check that square root of three is indeed what I pretend it to be. Hi. Um, it's 1.7 something. Yeah, 1.73, good. 
And so sometimes it's really hard to tell the difference between those two. All right, so let's finish this section up so we can do the last section or the next section. So we at least get two sections in today. All right, so the last part of this is we're gonna put it all together. Boop, boop, boop. All right, so let's put this together. I'm gonna to put this together in a very, uh, if it isn't, then just pretend harder. <laughs> I like that. It's not that. Just pretend with me. It's that. <laughs> um, all right. So let's go through this. No. Nope. <laughs> Wrong zoom. All right. So let's look at this. All right. So here we're going to draw the original graph. So what's the original graph in this mess? Well, the, oops, I'm still in pink. Um, the original graph in this mess is f of x squared, right? So here, or the base graph, not the original, but the base graph, right? So here, I'm going to take f of x squared. And, you know, I'm going to do this one in decimal so I can show you step by step what we're doing, okay? But let me draw, go ahead and draw this in. I think, let's, no, let's just go straight to decimal. So I think that'll be better for you to see us build this one at a time. All right, so let's build this one at a time in decimal. Make sure I do it in the correct order. Desmos, Desmos. Right, so what, what are all my transformations here, right? And what I like to do, what I like to do is I like to say, when I do this, I say, what's the new center? So the new center here, so here I'm moving it to the right by one. I'm moving it up by two. So my new center, so if it, I was zero, zero, is now going to look like one comma two, right? Because I'm moving it right one. So whatever zero, zero is at, that's now at one comma two. So over one, up two, right? And then here, I'm going to reflect across the x-axis. Um, it's going to be reflected across the x-axis. But notice the reflection should happen first. Um, and most of the time you're gonna do this first. And let me show you. All right, so let's let's do this one one tiny step at a time. So I'm gonna have my boring old x squared here. Oops, x squared. All right, so here I have boring old x squared. Nothing, nothing too fancy about it. That's what I want. Okay, so we have x squared here. And then what I'm going to do to it is I'm going to move it to the right by one. Okay, so here I've taken it. I moved it over the right by one. Then I'm going to take, then I'm going to take it and move it up by two. So here I moved it to the right one, up by two. And then I'm going to negate it. Um, And that flips it upside down, but that flips it upside down from its new center point, right? So you'll flip it from its new center point. Um, but I guess a better way of doing this is to do I guess it'd be better to negate it first, flip it upside down and then move it around. Oops. So you either can move it and then flip it from its center point. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. So let me show you. Um, I guess I should always tell you to do this. So flip it from, flip it from the x-axis. So do the flip first. And then after you flipped it, move it to the right. And then move it up. And I'll give you your new one. Okay. You can do it the other way, like I showed you. That's the way I do it, is I move it and then flip it, but you'll flip it from the point your new center. Okay. So there's no true order to do it in, but when you flip it, make sure you flip it from the center point. Okay. So if you leave the center first, if you don't move the center and flip it, you don't have to worry about it. If you move it and then flip it, it's fine. Okay. So let's go ahead and draw that in. So here's just a 
Okay. All right, so let's do the same thing with x. So, so here, if we have this, now here I have a 2x plus 2 plus all this. In order to make this a little bit easier for you, it's a good idea to factor this. And so here, our original function here is f of the absolute value of x. And what we're going to do to it is I'm going to take this and I'm going to take out the 2. So the x minus um, 1 over negative 1. Okay. Now the reason we factor is that I move my function to the correct thing. So here my original function looks like this. Hello? It's not doing it. Why are you not doing it? There it goes. All right, so that's my original function. And let's, so what are we going to do this? So my new center, where's my new center for this one? I'll have you guys write it in chat. Where's my new center point for this? If I do the, and take it from here. So I'm going to move it to which way and which way. Yeah. So, okay, so we're going to move it over. Uh, we're going to move it to the left. One. Or, or, or hold on. We're going to move it down one, and they're also going to move it to the left by x amount. And so here, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you did you did one of the transformations, correct? It, so if we did both at once, which one which one would it be? It'd be negative one, negative one. No, yeah, you did what I showed you to do. Do it one step at a time. <laughs> so here we do it this, and then here we're just going to. And then we're going to uh, stretch it. Um, and this is where it gets kind of funny, right? Because let me show you. Let me show you in Desmos. Desmos. Um, Desmos. So let's take the ABS. This is how you type in absolute value. Hi. There we go. ABS. X. All right. So absolute value of X, right? And then we're going to take the absolute value of x. I'll just copy. Let me do it one step at a time like I did last time. We're going to minus 1 from it. So we moved it down. We're going to take the absolute value of x. And we're going to do minus or add 1 to it. So we'll move it to the right. And the very last thing we're going to do to it is we're going to take this and we're going to multiply all the inside by 2. That's what makes it. So here, let me show you step by step what we did. So we're going to take absolute value. We're going to move it down by 1. Then we're going to move it to the left by 1. And then we're going to, then we're going to shrink it by a factor of 2. Um, and we're going to horizontally, which is the same thing as stretching it by a factor of 2, because you could easily pull the 2 out of the absolute value. So it ends up being the same. And that's what we get here. So let's go ahead and draw that in. Here I am. Here's my new spot. I have this point, this point, this point, and this point, and then 2, 2, to uh, where we went up to, so here, see if I can draw the thing correctly. Oops, hi. There we go. There we go. I slightly missed, but that's okay. All right. And so here we moved and shipped and done everything. And so it kind of didn't do. When we reflect across the x-axis, you either do this first and then move it around, or you reflect it across the center point. Either way works. And then here. All right, so let's just talk about even and odd functions real quick. And that'll be the end of the section. This is, I guess it is kind of a long section. All right, so here we have a function is either even or odd. Uh, oh, shift plus that also gives that. I, I bet. I bet you can type it in Desmos that way, and I bet it's smart enough to figure that out. <laughs> um, so, 
Okay, so here we're going to have functions even that. So if, if you plug in negative x of x and get f of x for all x in the domain, we call that even. If we do that, plug in negative x and we get negative f of x, we call that odd. Um, and let me kind of show you some even and odd things. So here, um, most functions are neither even or odd. So e even or odd in the terms of of integers, either functions, either an integer is even or odd, right? And so, but most things are not, right? Because if I said, well, is the number 1.5 even, odd? And the answer is, is really neither, right? <laughs> um, and the same thing with most functions, because here, if I plug in f of minus x, I get negative x plus 3, which is equal to minus x plus 3. And notice that this is neither, right? It's neither the original function, the original function would be x plus 3 it is not that. And it's not and it's not a negation of the function because if I negated the whole function, I get negative x, negative 3. So this one's really neither. But let's do something. Let's do another one. Here, if I have f of minus x, what do I get here? As I get 4 minus x cubed plus 2x, or 2 times minus x. So negative negative x cubed is the same thing as negative 4x cubed minus 2x. And notice this is equal to minus f of x. It's equal to the negation of this function. And therefore, we call this odd. I am going to do d next just for fun, um, just for the sake of teaching. So here I'll have 3 times negative x squared plus 4. So this is equal to 3x squared plus 4. So notice I get back the same function, because x negative x squared is just the same thing as x squared, and we call this even. So does so anyone have a clue why we call the functions even or odd? Does anyone know why? And I'm going to do C as you... So I have one person honestly say no. Okay. And what happens is here is the powers. So notice the powers on x here are all odd. It's 3 and 1. Both of these are odd, leads to an odd function. This is x squared and x to the 0, really. And both of these are even. And so that leads to an even function. This has x and then x to the 0, technically, because x to the 0 is equal to the constant term, right? So this is odd and even. And if you have terms of both odd and even, it's neither. Here, look, we have terms of which are both odd and even. So you can probably guess this is neither, and we'll find out that to be the case. Here, if I plug in negative x, I get 2 times negative x squared plus 3 times negative x plus 4. Well, that's equal to, hello. Yeah, I knew it was going to get crunchy. 2 negative x squared plus, minus 3x plus 4. And notice that this is neither negation or that, so it's neither. So it really, it comes from the power of the function. Because notice that x to the 6 is an even function. x to the 7 is an odd function. Um, in the sense that if I plug in negative x here, and I multiply that times 6 times, I'm just going to get back 6x. But if I plug in negative x into x to the 7th, I'm going to get minus x to the 7th. Okay? And so that's really where it comes from. So I'm just rid of that so I can do number seven. Number seven is here. If I plug in f of minus x, what is the answer here? What is f of negative x for e? Yeah, so it's the degree. The degree, um, it's the degree. If the degree of each of the terms is odd, the function overall would be odd. If the degree of each of the terms is even, the function overall would be even. If it's a mixture of even and odd, it ends up being neither. Okay, so that's where it comes from. But all the time, you just plug this. You just plug this in and calculate it out. Okay, because like this, there is no powers, but you want to figure out if it's even or odd. Okay, but if I plug in negative f of x, negative x into seven, what do I get? Does anyone know what I get? I'll do this one. As I'll let you guys think about that.
Oops. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this one's even, because here if I plug a negative x of the absolute value of x, I can pull out the negative sign, and if I pull it out, it becomes positive, and therefore nothing changes here. Minus x of x of 7 is just 7. <laughs> There's no x here to plug in. So if I plug in a negative of a function, it's still the function, and so this is indeed even. And technically, this is x to the 0 power, so you could, you could say that's even. Okay, so even or non functions come up, you'll deal with that more in trig, where cosine is odd and sine is even. Um, and so you'll deal with that then. Okay, all right, so let me save this out and then we'll do our last section real quick.